Hey guys, this is Andrew from Gemba Red, and I'm here to talk about the Gemba Red Crane. This is our newest uh, LED light with a nice little gooseneck so you can read your books with it. And so I'm just going to introduce it to you right now. Uh, again, similar to our Gemba Red Rave, which is our strip light, uh, it's powered by a USB port. Uh, so again, it's pretty universal. I'm going to plug it into my computer right now. And then uh, we've got a little clip on off switch. And then here we go. We've got a little, some little books, and uh, we can go through and read, read through our books, you know, to the red light. So obviously, if it's nighttime, you can be re reading your books, you know, with the red light, you know, not worrying about, you know, getting blue light hazard or blue light, um, you know, affecting your your sleep cycle or or anything like that. Um, so the nice thing about this light is obviously you can stand it upright. It does have a clip. So you could clip it onto something, uh, but if you kind of balance it right, you know, it just kind of cranes over and uses, you can use the gooseneck and aim it in different areas. Um, so you can see it's pretty bright light. It's a one watt, uh, you know, just a single one watt LED light bulb in here, as opposed to the Gemba Red Rave, we'll compare it to, uh, this uses 30 LED lights and they're much, you know, smaller, um, lower powered LED lights. So this actually consumes seven watts compared to this is consuming one watt. Um, so the Gemba Red Rave is good for kind of more diffuse, uh, you know, lighting up a small portion of a room. You can kind of coil it around, uh, place it in different areas of the room and kind of leave that going. Uh, so that way when you're walking around, you have some light to walk around and do stuff by. Um, this is more task oriented, so you're going to aim it at whatever you're doing. If you're writing on your, your desk, if you're, you know, if you want a backlight for your keyboard and you're working on your computer at night, uh, if you're reading, journaling, uh, doing some sort of task at night, then this will be able to target that single task. But this is more for, you know, some ambient lighting, some backlighting or, or mood lighting. So you can kind of see that comparison, you know, like these two kind of help round out the product selection. I think when I was originally trying to uh, design a reading light, I came across this and I was like, wow, this is a great little handy technology. So I came out with this first uh, while I continued to develop this and then uh, finally this came to reality. So it's, it's pretty great. Uh, now I've got a couple of cool tool, tools while I'm here. Um, I've got my solar power meter, my Tenmars TM206. Uh, it reads in watts per meter squared. Um, so I do do not think this is a good meter. Like if you're if you're serious about red light therapy, this reads tends to read falsely high, and I don't know how to recalibrate it. I don't know if there's a way. Um, but it kind of gives you a good swag of like, you know, the order of magnitude for different lights. So if I hold it up to this light, I'm not sure if you'll be able to read it, but. Um, Usually if I hold it within about an inch, I'm reading about 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared because I know just to shift that decimal. Um, so it's about 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So that's, right, that's pretty good. Um, you know, if you look up the studies with lasers and things like that, you would think that's pretty good. But like I said, this reads falsely high. Uh, so I would almost expect this to be like half of that. So when I do send these out um, to get professionally measured, I would, I would expect to be more like, at most like 40 uh, milliwatts per centimeter squared, but we'll see. I'll update the website once I get those numbers in. Uh, we can compare it to these little guys. Um, you know, if I try to just hold it up to one of the bulbs, you know, I can read, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 uh, milliwatts per centimeter squared. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea. So each one of these is doing you know, 10, so it's, it's a pretty good brightness, you know, the sum of it, but, you know, when a single LED is, is giving 10, and this is saying 100, you can kind of see that order of magnitude difference uh, going on. So this is much more bright for the task you're doing. Um, it's not so good, like, if you want to light up a room with, that's what you want to use this for, because this, if you get some stray light in your eye, you can see, you know, you can get that glare, whereas, you know, these will be on and you'll, you're going to get a lot less glare even if you get it straight into your eye. Um, so that's good. It won't you know, disrupt you. These are more gentle for, for the eyes um, 
unless you're just using this right for your task. Uh, this is a um, low frequency EMF meter. Um, this is a perfect little uh, tool to measure your LED lights and uh, things around the house because a lot of other meters are designed more for radio frequency and this one's more tuned to the electric field and the magnetic field so those are those are the key things to look for in um, you know LED devices and things like that um, so this one we can turn it on I'll switch it to volts per meter which is the electric field and you can kind of see the ambient measurement in this room is probably around like 10 or 11 and uh, you know if we hold it right up to this light you know you're probably it's actually less <laughs> probably because my hand interferes with it so we're reading at like four which that's like nothing right and it's plugged into my computer which is currently off the grid so if you're plugging it into like a computer or a battery like the usb battery packs you're not going to get any any emf which is great um same thing for this you know i'll just dangle this and we'll have both lights right next to each other and you'll just still see there's still nothing nothing going on right uh, magnetic field, you know, I don't even expect to see a high magnetic field because, you know, the amount of power and the amount of current that we're, we're running through z these lights is like negligible. So it's not still, so we switch it to magnetic field now and we're reading like 10 and 10, that's a uh, 10 in the nano Tesla. So you factor that by a hundred to get milligauss. So that's 0.1 milligauss, so that, again, that's practically nothing. So really great lights um, to use around the house and plug them into a computer or battery pack, you won't have any issues. Um, so that's it. So you get a good amount of brightness. You get this for your reading light, this as your kind of ambient light, and uh, you're getting a pretty good solution for your nighttime environment. So hope that helps. Thanks. Bye-bye.